Hey everyone, welcome to John Giordano's Beat Your Addictions. And what I said, by the way, Beat Your Addictions means that from moment to moment, you have to do the work. It's an ongoing process. It's not you beat it, it's over with, and you go home. I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, if you like our show, please share it, okay? It really helps us to get this going, follow us, and it really makes a difference because we're giving you guys some really good, really good information that you may want to use. Now, I have my guest here today, Megan. Hi. Megan's terrific. She works with us at the Ketamine Clinic in Pompano. Mm -hmm. That's the Ketamine Infusion Clinic in Pompano uh, of South Florida. Ketamine Clinic of South Florida. Mm -hmm. And Megan, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and yourself and yeah. let's go from there. Yeah, of course. Um, well, nice to meet everyone. Uh, my name is Megan. Um, I just moved to South Florida from Santa Monica, California back in January. Um, I started out at Ketamine Clinic South Florida as a receptionist. Um, I was working briefly in um, regenerative medicine and a ketamine office in Santa Monica. So when I moved here, um, I wanted to quickly get involved in the same type of holistic alternative medicine. Um, and, you know, through working hard uh, throughout the whole summer, um, and I would say back in August, I went into marketing and development for the clinic. And then September, I was doing ketamine consulting. And she's doing a great job, by the way. And we started her off as a receptionist to learn what we do, how we do it, and how it compared to California, what they're doing and how they and what's going on there. Yeah. So t tell us a little bit about why why you feel our, our center is different than everyone else's. Yeah. Um, well, first things first, uh, Callie and Sonia are our two certified nurse anesthesiologists. Uh, they are experts um, on ketamine itself, uh, which is super important. These ketamine clinics are popping up everywhere. So it's super important to have a practitioner who is an expert on ketamine because um, it is an emergency medicine to start out. Um, but basically, Callie and Sonia, when they're not working at the clinic, they're working in the OR administering ketamine in high doses for anesthesia. So it's right. pretty remarkable. At I mean, the hospital. Exactly. Right. So they had been working um, with anesthesia and high doses for anesthesia for years before they opened the clinic, um, administering ketamine in low doses, considered off-label use um, for mental health. And they also were doing chronic pain as well. So I think that's very important um, that, you know, the practitioner knows the medicine before um, administering in off-label use. Well, you know, what, what, what attracted me to come and become a partner with them is because, of course, I'm one of the leading experts on addiction yeah. and, and alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I watched how they worked and how they cared about the clients, yeah. uh, how they stayed on top of everything, how they did aftercare with them, how they did counseling with them, mm -hmm. and and um, how they were always doing their best to improve their procedure. Yeah. They they had people on heart monitors. Um, they had EKG, a, a finger EKG. Yeah. They have oxygen levels. They do everything really professional mm -hmm. and not just here, take ketamine and you're done with your depression and, and uh, anxiety. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about some of the feedback you're getting from you know, patients that come to us. Yeah, of course. Um, so we were featured on CBS News Channel 4 back in May. Um, we had uh, two clients of ours, um, a, a mother and a son, who both did treatment. Um, and the way he put it was, uh, you know, pre-ketamine me didn't want to live and post-ketamine me wants to live and is now doing this CBS news story. So talk about that's cool. a complete change. Yeah, it's 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 beautiful. I mean, that's why I love what I do so much because the transformation and the healing and the trauma processing that happens in our clinic, I mean, I, I can't think of another way where clients can safely and, and with so much support process all the stuff that is just weighing them down in their lives. Um, it's, it's beautiful. Well, you know, and me being, uh, uh, you know, dealing with mental health and addiction for, you know, about 35 years and being in recovery for 38 years, mm -hmm. uh, when people come in, some of them are, uh, uh, are recovering addicts and mm -hmm. they, they still have depression. They still have anxiety. And also what's good that, that what the girls wanted to bring to the clinic is also somebody who does PTSD work mm -hmm. is that's what I do. Also, mm -hmm. I work with police officers that have been in shootings and 
people coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, rape rick victims and things of that nature. So it brought another level to it. And, and now we're going to be starting group therapy with all the patients that come to us. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just want to make it clear with everybody. And I think if you can just elaborate on it, ketamine is not a magic bullet. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. It helps to build new neurons in the brain. But tell them what else you have to do. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, going in for the ketamine infusion is just a tiny, tiny piece of the whole process. Um, Integration is just as important as the ketamine administration or the infusion itself. Um, It is so, so important to be integrating and basically utilizing your brain when it's in this vulnerable state of learning Um, because the ketamine creates the neurogenesis. So basically your brain's in like hungry to latch on to any new habit, um, mindset, new way of thinking. So it really gives patients the opportunity to, you know, take their mental health in their own hands and do that outside work to get the relief to stick. Um, the ketamine is just a tool. It's what you do with that tool that makes us go from just a medical treatment to lifelong relief. And that's the goal is lifelong relief. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. With support. You see, here's the problem. There's, you know, it reminds me of the addiction field. There, like, there were a lot of addiction centers opening up, and it, they became warehouses. People going in, people coming out, and people continuously relapsing. Um, I think I see this is going on with the ketamine industry, and also people that are opening up these ketamine clinics. Not all of them. I don't want to give that impression, but a lot of them, or some of them, or whatever way you want to call it, they're not doing integration. They're not doing mm-hmm. counseling. Uh, they're not really doing a, much of a follow-up care. This is something, look, if you've been doing behaviors for 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, five years, whatever, okay, you need support to start learning new behaviors along with the ketamine. Now, most people ask us, and I'm, I'm going to ask you, okay, so after my six sessions that I do, well, what happens then? Yeah. So uh, once patients complete the six series of infusions, uh, they can come back for maintenance boosters as needed. Uh, We usually establish that maintenance booster wellness plan on their fifth or sixth infusions. I do find that patients that do come back regularly for the boosters, um, either it's, you know, diagnosis based, how deep the trauma is, or um, uh, if they haven't been heavily integrating. Um, I like to compare it to... um, you know, finding relief from mental illness is like going to the gym and working out your muscle, right? You have to keep working the muscle for the muscle to grow. So basically all the habits and the way your brain is from the day you were born until now, we have to unwind that and reverse all those habits that were created and replace all the bad habits. Yeah. Replace those with um, good habits. And so, you know, that, that relief of mental illness with integration is like working that muscle. So that way it grows and grows and all that old baggage is gone, right? It's doormat. That's the goal is for all those thought thoughts and all that mental illness uh, struggles for it to be doormat. So, you know, we have uh, also, we have coaches that know about psychedelics that have been doing this for years to help coach you through your journey as yes. you go through it. This is so important, this integration. If you start looking at psychedelics and the history of it, it's been around for thousands of years and it always has a ceremony around it. So, and a, and, a, and, a, and a place that's very inviting and very warm yes. uh, where you feel like kind of like you're in the womb, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very wellness-oriented. Um, we, we actually are in the process of expanding right now. We just renovated uh, four new infusion rooms, a med spa, a stellate ganglion block room. and Well, tell them about that, the ganglion block oh, room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and this is really interesting, guys. You got to listen to this one. Yeah. I mean, it's so it's a very up-and-coming treatment for uh, PTSD and post-COVID symptoms. Um, I remember, I think it was one of the first patients we did the stellate ganglion block on, which is an injection in the stellate ganglion nerve. Um, basically, it resets the parasympathetic nervous system. So kind of like a, a, a spark plugs it's on like a, car. a reboot. It's like a reboot. Yes, it's like a reboot. Um, and I think what it was one of the very first patients that we treated didn't have to taste or smell for two years. Well, you're looking at one also that got this, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah you did oh, get yeah, it. that's right. I did. Oh, yeah. I got it. Well, this patient, she had not tasted or smelled anything for two years uh, following having COVID in 2020. And within 15 minutes, uh, she, we gave her coffee and she was in tears crying because she got her um, taste back. And so basically, the way the stellate ganglion block works is for post COVID, 
Um, it'll be one injection, um, and then we wait about an hour and a half. Generally, patients do find relief instantly. It's within 15 minutes. Um, they'll go try some food, and then basically, depending upon if they still have their taste back within that hour and a half, they'll come back for the second injection. Um, most patients get the second one just to get, you know, just to complete the series of two, uh, and they have relief. Imagine well, that. I, I'm, I'm looking for my second one. I, yeah. you know, it, it was really interesting when I had COVID and I got rid of it in about two and a half days. I'm using all the alternative treatments that I learned. Nice. And what happened was, is that I could smell, but I couldn't taste. It tastes, food tasted like cardboard. I mean, it was, it's like, was the yeah. weirdest thing. That's debilitating. Yeah. And I'm eating stuff that I really like and I'm going, what? something's wrong with this yeah. food. Yeah. You know, it didn't have any taste to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I kept on adding spices and it was like it was like a joke already. I mean, I got smoke coming out of my ears, but with the I'm not tasting pepper. the spice. <laughs> so, oh my gosh! Yeah. So I never, I never even heard of this technology. The way they do it, we we do evidence based. You know, I, for myself, I know who's going to talk to this kid from the South Bronx, and you know, and it's just a therapist and all this stuff. So uh, yeah. what I did was I got you know with a bunch of scientists, fortunately, and. I'm currently, we just have another paper, by the way, a peer reviewed journal that our clinic is in with Dr. Blum. He's the geneticist who found the addiction gene. I just got an email from him that we're on another paper, which is really, really cool. <laughs> we're going to be doing outcome studies. We take this seriously. It's not just about money, this is about helping God's kids. And everybody at the clinic, uh, I fell in love with the place. It's yeah. such a nice, soothing environment. Uh, Sonia, what she did, and Callie, and you know, mostly Sonia, the decorator. You know, Sonia did a lot of the the decorations, the paintings, and the and yeah. the and the colors, and the ambiance, and the music. Yeah, just creating this like safe healing container where you know patients can just come in and feel so safe and welcomed, and you know, we're a great support team. Um, for our patients. Well, what I was impressed with mostly was the follow-up care because I brought my wife there and we had her on one of these shows mm -hmm. and talking about her depression and her anxiety. And also we have uh, a team of therapists and a psychiatrist that also works with us. So, you know, it's part of the process is we, we tell the patient, uh, why don't you tell the process with, um, with their therapist or their psychiatrist, how it works when they want to come into the clinic. Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, we they are... don't just treat anybody. That's what I'm trying to explain to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I do consultations for the clinics. So it basically uh, the initial consultation is kind of a screening process uh, for medical history. Um, you know, any uh, medical history of high blood pressure, seizure, stroke, we, we like to um, filter and screen all of this first. And then um, basically we have patients get a referral from either psychiatrist. But or that doesn't care. mean it's a rule act because they have high blood pressure yeah, and like yeah. that. Yep. Well, so if anything, we'll get medical clearance right. um, or make sure it's controlled with medication. Um, we have, you know, we have blood pressure medication in the office. So if, you know, when every patient that comes in for treatment, we get starting vial vitals. And if the blood pressure is too high, we will give. Well, you have to remember guys, Sonia and Callie, my partners, they're critical care nurses. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is like the top of the food chain. They're, they're just basically like doctors. They're the yeah. ones that, you know, are in the operating room giving you uh, the anesthesia. Yeah. And, and then, watching your vitals and watching everything. And uh, they're incredible, I got to tell you. Yeah. And the, and the clinic is actually like a very calm, much calmer environment than what they're used to. They're used to that, you know, adrenaline rush, very fast paced code, like all that hospital stuff. So you know, the clinic for them is just um, more of like a, a relaxing atmosphere to be able to really focus on treating. What are some of the rule outs that people that can't do? And if you have some of these rule outs, please, you know, really make sure that you speak to your psychiatrist or psychologist, whatever it is, and get to understand what are some of the rule outs, like what schizophrenia, what, you know, yeah, what else? Schizophrenia, uh, manic bipolar, disassociative uh, disorder, personality disorder. Um, uh, cystitis, any major bladder issues, um, kidney, but you know, all we, we try our best to, you know, treat patients, you know, I don't even clearance. think we try. I think we do it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but 
Yeah, it's pretty if you're going to look for a ketamine clinic, and you know, and, and here's the thing, this is not just a, a commercial for our ketamine clinic, but I just want to let you guys know, make sure they, they're looking at you medically, psychologically, make sure that you have follow-up care. Uh, we don't, uh, even the ketamine that we do, it's not one shoe fits all. Everyone's different. Everybody has a different body weight, a different circumstances that are involved. And what, what Sonia and what Callie do is they make sure that each person has an individualized treatment, not just one uh, 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 ketamine infusion fits all. We don't do that. Okay. They try titrate them up or might titrate them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Depending on what they're seeing and what they're hearing from the, from the patient. Exactly. That's a conversation uh, that is had before each infusion, um, you know, raising the dose, how much we're going to go. So it's not like, you know, you're thrown into um, psychedelic experience. Actually the first infusion is such a small dose. Um, it's pretty much just an introduction to the medicine. Yeah. I want to see how you tolerate and you know, yeah. how you respond. Now, also, what we do is we do uh, IV nutrients, but we also have available, okay. Uh, well, we're actually tackling wellness from a multi-perspective approach. Um, aesthetic services, we just opened a branch, um, KCSF Med Spa, uh, where we're going to be doing, you know, fillers and Botox and PRP. Um, lots of cool stuff happening there. We're going to be doing micronutrient testing. And from those, that micronutrient testing, we're going to be personalizing IV nutrient bags and treatments for patients. Um, and then, you know, patients can certainly uh, take advantage of our trauma processing sessions with John, as well as additional coaching sessions, uh, group therapy, individual therapy. Um, you know, the stellic ganglion block uh, can help with PTSD as well. So we'll have patients who actually do a ketamine infusion followed by the stellic ganglion block, and then end their day with an IV. Well, you know what's also interesting? We also do NAD, yeah, which is really cool. I'm doing it. My wife's doing it. And I'm doing my, it too. You're doing it too? And <laughs> I'm my, gonna, yeah. My energy is changing. Uh, and look up NAD, guys. I don't want you to believe a word that we tell you. I want you to look up anything that we say here that you're not sure of. Uh, NAD actually is cellular reconstruction. And it works with what is known as your mitochondria. Your mitochondria is the energy of your uh, engine of your body. And um, it does cellular repair. And it's unbelievable. And we also going to include it in our aesthetics because it helps with collagen. It helps getting that going. Yeah. And, and there's some real cool stuff coming down the pike. Yeah, the at-home uh, kits we just got, you actually can reconstitute them. So they come in a powder. So um, super, super cool rather than having a bunch of, you know, uh, NAD ship that needs to be chilled, right? And has an expiration date. You know, the expiration date starts. Well, it has to be chilled after you constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you after, but, you know, when it's, it's still in powder form, it has a longer shelf Well, life. before we see, because I do all the science stuff and, yeah. and that's what I brought to the clinic is we, uh, uh, we, got into, we got introduced to the manufacturer of NMMD. Uh, an MD, and what was really, really cool was that the 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 kind that this guy manufactures is that we have a shelf life of two years, so we don't have to pre-order it for somebody yeah. to make sure they use it within seven days. So and when you do days. NAD with us, there's also another piece that we also can give you a take home, okay, to do it every other day or, or daily, depending on your need, okay. Uh, we're doing some really, really groundbreaking things yeah so i want this company and so do my partners and so does megan to be um standing out from all the rest yes. we we we're looking at we look at the gut you know most people are not looking up well where does depression and anxiety come from oh my thoughts uh yes that's part of it but you can have low thyroid you can have depression and anxiety you can have leaky gut syndrome h pylori infection hypoglycemia hypoglycemia, closed head injuries, uh, high testosterone, low testosterone, all of these things can cause depression and anxiety. We look at the whole person. We're not just the ketamine clinic that gives you ketamine and says, have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you for your donation. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. And I'm so glad that you joined the team, John, because you know I'm finding that a lot of the patients that are coming in, you know, the trauma is getting deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And, you know, I feel like you came on at a great time because we've been doing a lot of these trauma sessions with the clients that have been coming in and 
it's it's just so so amazing what we're doing. We're really providing such a great, safe atmosphere for clients to be able to do all that inner work that is really hard to accomplish. You know, and, and some people say, well, how come you added aesthetics to this, like Botox and wrestling and doing the lips and doing the eyes and doing well. We don't only want you to feel good. We want you to look good. Yeah, and if you so look good. So it's a whole it's a whole enchilada, right? Exactly. I was just reading this article and um, see if I can reword this correctly. They were saying how um, women are more likely to go out in, you know, social situations if they feel good about themselves. And so we made it so easy for patients, you know, while you do have a ketamine infusion and you come in, you know, you can just go across the hall and get any services done that you would like, you know, just a complete... You know, it, it's this way. When you see people in depression, they don't they don't take care of their their nails. They don't. don't let's say it's women. Hard to for leave instance, the house too. They don't even want to leave the house. They don't take care of their hair. They don't want to go to the appointment. They don't want to. They don't do things they enjoy anymore. And we also have the availability of uh, fat loss program, uh, weight loss program, fat loss, whatever you want yeah. to call it, uh, exercise nice programs. Too. You know, we can set you up for anything you want. I always ask patients or clients, how well do you want to be? Where are you in your life? What kind of quality of life do you want to have? We're also doing peptides, okay, which helps with weight loss. We do a lot of things. Look, remember something. If you don't like the way you look, a lot of times you may not feel good about yourself, and that causes depression and anxiety also. Domino effect. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we look at the whole person. Yeah. We're not just looking at a part of you. We're looking at all of you. And, you know, we also include the families. If You know, we, we have all kinds of things that we do there that most places don't do. And we do welcome, you know, fa family members. Uh, we, I find that family members usually find the transformation or see the transformation before the patient does. Right. So we definitely welcome, you know, family and any support team. I mean, it's all uh, patient-centered care. You always see, you know, coming from the addiction arena, mental health arena, we know how important family is. We know how important it is for group therapy and individual therapy uh, to do this, to help put somebody on course. Now, listen, we don't get you well. You get you well. Mm -hmm. All right. You have to do the work. That's the best part. That's the bottom line. Ours is to guide you as best we can. So, like I say, how well do you want to be? Yeah. You know, and, and the bottom line is, is that, uh, nobody in our clinic smokes cigarettes. We, we don't. Nobody does drugs. We're drug-free facility. Mm -hmm. uh, none of this goes on because listen, we need to set an example for our patients. If I'm out there smoking, I remember in my treatment center, I had a therapist. She's out there smoking cigarettes, and I look at her and I go, um, "What are you doing?" So I'm smoking a cigarette. She, I says, "Don't you realize that addicts are looking at you and they're going, well, you want me to quit my drug? Why don't you quit your drug?'" So do as I say, not as I do. I don't know about you, never worked for me. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to also give an image of health. Okay, I'm 76 years old. I work out. I eat pretty good. Uh, I take all my nutrients. I get the IVs. I've gotten ketamine. I wanted to know what it was and what it was like. And it helped me tremendously. And I'm in recovery 38 years. So it opened some doors of mine that I didn't even realize were closed. So, yeah, this can really help you, but you need follow-up care. You know, now they're doing take-home. I don't agree with that. Uh, maybe some of these doctors will agree. I, I don't agree with it at all. Because remember, ketamine used to be in a, a drug, a club drug, okay? And I know addicts. If you're an addict, if you're predisposed for addiction, hey, man, I feel good. So probably more is better. Mm -hmm. So we don't do that. So if you're looking to come to us to get you a take-home, Forget it. Yeah. And that happening. Okay. I don't care what any clinics say to you. Okay. And besides, those take home are only about 40% what uh, that you can get into your system or 20%. Yeah, you, you don't reach the deep you, you know, And then you need somebody to guide you. You need, yeah. you know, you need support. It's not just about doing a medication. You need support and follow up care. Mm -hmm. And that's why we put together the group therapy that we're doing. Uh, so we have a good follow-up care. We have a nice alumni. And then we're doing outcome studies so we can better improve our outcomes and also better improve our care. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I I love that ketamine personally, you know, changed your life. It definitely changed mine as well. I mean, I can't even, I don't even remember the woman I used to be before I did this treatment, which is why I wanted to, you know, help with the development process and uh, help with patients and onboarding them because it's, this medicine is so underrated and, and there's such a stigma behind it, but it truly is you know, such an incredible transformational uh, medicine that really allows patients to rediscover themselves. Well, you know, it's so. interesting. I, I got some, you know, I, I thought I was getting a lot more push pushback on me opening up a ketamine clinic and even doing ketamine because I'm in recovery. And they go, well, you're in recovery and you're doing ketamine. Now. Look, let me explain to you about relapse, okay? Relapse is your intent, okay? If you go to a doctor, I get a hip replacement and I, they give me Percocets for three or four days, okay? fine. I had to have that. Okay. But if I continue and I can't wait to get high with it, now you got a whole different ball game. So it's not so much the medication, it's your intent and what you're doing and the excuses you use to continue to use these types of medications. Exactly. Okay. This, it's like Ibogaine. I work with Dr. Deborah Mash and Ibogaine was a whole other program we could talk about because we don't have much time. We're running out of time, but it's another psychedelic uh, that gets rid of uh, gets detoxes people in 24 to 36 hours. It's amazing what it does. It gets into your subconscious, similar to ketamine. Ketamine goes into your subconscious, your hard drive of your brain, okay? And it helps you to extrapolate out all this trauma and all this information so you can start looking at it in a different way and then process it and then overcoming some of your disabilities. Yeah. I'm going to actually touch on that. Um our integration coach um, kind of worded it like this. Basically, our whole lives, we go through all this, all these experiences and we just put them behind us, right? Set a good example for friends, family, bosses, kids. What we're really doing is we're stuffing it inside of us. It's leaking poison every day. It's affecting every, a present moment, every decision we make, right? And so ketamine, you combine the disassociation with the hallucinogenic effects that allows patients to face their biggest fears, right? And process them. And fears they didn't even know they had. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Some of my infusion stuff came out that it had been eight years ago, a conversation I'd had with someone that I completely forgot about. And when it came out during my infusion, I was like, wow, that was important. And then I did the outside work and I extracted the lesson and the insight and then got solidified and expanded. Well, healing. that that also I, happened to me. It's interesting. I was telling yeah. Sonia, my partner, I said, you know, the other day I was talking about something that happened to me, a trauma that I spoke about a number of times, never never emoted, never had any emotions with it. And I started crying. I was talking to my wife about it. And I went, what the heck is going on oh, here? I love you that know? for you. Yeah, it was like really <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. I'm crying over something I spoke about a hundred times. You know, I was feeling the emotion. It's a release. That, that I, I believe the ketamine opened that door for it, it to allow me to feel again in that arena, which I thought I did feel before, but I, I probably, most likely I didn't. That's amazing. So why don't you just tell them how to get in touch with us? Yeah. Um, so once again, my name is Megan. I do marketing development and uh, consulting for the clinic. Uh, you can reach me at Megan at KetamineClinicSouthFlorida.com. You can call our clinic at 954-320-4944. Um, you could choose extension one. That is me. Um, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions or concerns. I'm here for your support. And our our our, our, uh, our website and our phone number is also on the screen. Yes. Listen, guys, it's no shame in your game. Come. There's no charge for you to come and do an evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to help you, but you got to do the work. Now, most people say, well, how much does this cost? And are you taking insurance? Well, unfortunately, insurance is I think they're trying to do it for take homes, which yeah. to me it's a big mistake. Okay, uh, there's no we don't take insurance. Number one, number two, we have financing. We do credit cards, and of course we do cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're very reasonable on our treatment cost. Mm -hmm. uh, if you you know if you check our prices out, you'll see that. And I have I tell patients all the time, you know, if you if you are kind of struggling to save up for treatment, um, you know, this is your mental health, this is your, the rest of your life, right? So if you need to take some time and save up, don't think of it as a setback. Think of it as more time to prepare, right? Take advantage of that time. While you're saving, 
you know, put it, put in that outside work, prep yourself. So when you're sitting in that infusion chair, you can just surrender. You know, people are more, they're more apt to fix their car, or buy a new pair of sneakers mm -hmm. and take care of themselves. And it, look at it this way. Look what your mental health and your addiction has cost you in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's still costing you and you're still paying for that. And you're not getting the quality of life. You deserve to live the best possible life. I hope every single one. I hope the insurance companies wake up and stop, you know, doing it so we can actually build through insurance. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's a whole other story about the pharmaceutical companies <laughs> yes. and, the, and the insurance Woo! companies. We won't end on that. We note. Won't, let's <laughs> we'll end on that note. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think uh, we okay. had all right, baby. <laughs> Well, I think we, I believe we're running out of time. And um, look, doesn't cost you anything to make a phone call. Mm -hmm. If you want to inquire more about us, please share this information with people. Yes. We really want to help you. All comes down to his education at this point. So right. spread the word. Knowledge is power, but without action is worthless. Well, we're done. And listen. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed our session. And Megan, thank, thank you for you. coming. No, thank you for having me. You you did a great job. I appreciate it. And you do a great job at our clinic. So thank you so much. All right, everybody. Till next time. See ya. Have a wonderful, blessed day.